Well, this is a great place to start. I know you've had a class discussion about undefined terms and defined terms. That's best done in the classroom. Let's just uh, start with these exercises. This is the first exercise in section 1-1, and we have these four, one, two, three, four different symbols, and we're going to decide what they mean. Um, capital letter Q simply means a point Q, and we're going to draw it like this. And as we remember, that's one of our undefined terms. It could be anywhere out there. Um, we just we say it's undefined because it just exists. I, I can't define it in terms of something else. MN uh, with a bar on top and that is clearly a line segment. It's a line segment that contains the endpoints M and N and of course would look something like this. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be horizontal. We write MN as though it reads left to right, because that's how we do it in this country. But this is also segment MN. This is MN, and so is this. So we've got that down. Next, ST. As you imagine, it is a ray with endpoint S, and that ray must contain the point T, which, of course, looks like this nice orange ray. Same as I previously said in MN, it could be the S is the end point and the T is on that ray somewhere. We don't really know what direction it is pointing. And finally, if you haven't already figured it there, a FG is a line. This symbol is a line containing points F and G. Um, we could say it's a pair of opposite rays, but we'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. So again, FG like this, like this, that is the line FG. Now let's just take a moment out for a few brief definitions. We're not going to talk too much about segments and rays because you'll pick that up as we go along. Um, we've got those two up here. But I want to mention opposite rays. This comes up a lot here. And there's, there is a big deal here because we know that if I do this, if I were to take an angle, ah, well, I now have a pair of opposite rays. That opposite rays actually forms a line. But here is the really important part. We can assume collinearity from a diagram. That's not that important right now, but it's going to be a big deal when we get to proofs. So the fact that we see M, Q, and Y, we could simply refer to this as the line M, Y or the line QY, or YQ, etc. But they are opposite rays. We'll also see it as a straight angle. We'll call this a lot of different things. But the real, real important takeaway here is that these three points are collinear, and we can assume that directly by reading the diagram. That's unusual, and it's important. In this diagram, we have a plane which is named V, notice the capital V, and we have a line laying in the plane, the magenta line, and we have this red line which appears to intersect the plane. So let's answer the three relevant questions. Two other names for the line, WQ. Well, you can just reverse the letters QW, so if that makes sense, that's pretty easy. But also, we do have a lowercase g, and it is okay to name a line with a single lowercase letter. Next, um, name three points that are collinear. Well, that's pretty easy because we've got R, Q, and S. And we said earlier in this video, there we can see it, we can assume it, uh, assume collinearity from a diagram. Again, that's a big deal. So right there, those are collinear points. And either of these two points, that would be W or T, are not collinear with the previous three. In other words, they're not on that magenta line. It's all that easy. So, uh, one last question. W is point W coplanar with Q and R. Here is the trick question of the bunch. Because, of course, Q and R are down here, and they are on that, what I'll call the blue plane, plane V. W is clearly not on plane V, but the three points are coplanar because they're, well, they, and, um, because I can make a triangle like that. Imagine it looks like a sundial. This would be a plane uh, that's 
intersects. If, if it stood up from the blue plane, it would be a different plane. So they don't have to be on that flat plane on the, on the bottom. But any three points, they're either going to be collinear or they're going to be coplanar. Now in this diagram, we've got two lines, S and T, which I've color-coded blue and red for you, they, that intersect at V. And we're going to answer a few questions about um, rays. And in the first question, number nine, let's name some rays. I know from the endpoint V, I could draw Vx, Vy, Vw, and Vz. So I can see right away four different rays there. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Next question, number 11. How about another name for Wv? Now remember, Wv starts here passing this way from W to V. Well, since a ray is infinite, as the arrow indicates, that's the same as Wx because it contains all the points from W moving in this direction along that red line. So there you go. Let's just say Wx is another legitimate name for the ray Wv. And finally, for an error analysis, you'll see a lot of these questions in this textbook. Um, VW and VZ, they have a common endpoint. VW is here, VZ is here, but they're clearly not opposite rays because they have a common endpoint, but they would form what we, well, of course, what we call an angle. They have a common endpoint, which is known as a vertex, but they are not in opposite directions because the three points W, V, and Z are not collinear. So does not, they're not opposite rays. Instead, they form an angle. Okay, we're going to sketch exercise number 15 here. A line that lies in a plane and a line that does not lie in a plane. Well, the operative word here is sketch. We are not constructing. That is a far more specific task that you're going to be learning in a little bit. So I'm going to pull up my ruler or straight edge. I mean, it's a ruler because it has markings, but you're not making use of those markings. You're using it as a straight edge. I'm going to set it just arbitrarily on my paper, and I'm just going to draw a segment. And then I'm going to pick up my ruler, and I'm going to slide it. And if I just see, I hold it down, and I just slide it so I can keep them parallel like this. And then I'll trace across the top again and I've got two horizontal segments. Now, if I just turn my ruler a little bit, and I can connect this endpoint, these endpoints like this, and, and again, let me just drag this whole thing over here. See, if I slide it without changing its orientation, I'll get a nice drawing here, and it'll, what I've just drawn looks like a parallelogram because we're going to use that to depict a plane. Now you could shade it in if you wanted to, maybe with a little bit of your pencil, but now you're going to draw a line on the plane. So that means you're just going to put two arbitrary points there and maybe you'll set up your straight edge across like this and, and then you'll pull up your you know, a line and you'll just kind of pick two arbitrary points and maybe do something like that. And that may be depicting a line on the plane. To make a line appear to pass through the plane, I'll just take my straight edge and I'll turn it a little bit. And I'll do the well, same thing, except here's where a little bit of art may come into it. Um, say I'll, I'll take a ray. I'll just pick a, a point that looks like passing through here, going up. And then I'll imagine this down here on the straight edge coming out the bottom of this figure. I mean, really, the plane is infinite in all directions, but again, we're depicting it with this parallelogram, which is a rectangle viewed in an oblique direction. Wow, that's complicated. And I just trace it like that. When I move this figure away, when I move my straight edge out of the way, that's what I've got. You need to practice drawing because drawing is going to be a big part of this course. 
Remember, this is a drawing. This is not a construction. In these three exercises, we're going to look at planes. And we've drawn a figure here that looks like a box. And we'll use that to depict the various planes. I've shaded it for your convenience so we can see in this diagram, we clearly have one, two, three visible planes, and we have three in the background. Um, I could refer to this as front, top, and right, but there's another way to name planes coming right up. All right, exercise number 20. P, Q, F. Obviously, they are not collinear, but are they coplanar? Well, yeah. Pretty easy. And that would be that plane in the front, which I would call, might call the blue plane, but we can name the plane with any three letters, any three of its points on the plane. It's not correct to call them vertices because the planes really are infinite in all directions. We're just depicting them as, in this case, a, a rectangle. So now let's, let's see what else we've got here. Um, let's move on to 21, more exciting. And again, we talked about all these various planes. We've got the top and the bottom plane. We've got kind of the front and back plane. So you can see there's six planes depicted here. So which ones are we going to use? Well, um, in this in exercise 21, I'm asked for P and G. Are they collinear? Are they coplanar? You might be tricked because it didn't fit on any of those six planes. But the fact is, they are collinear. They're collinear because I could draw a line through the diagonal, if you will, of the box. And if I drew a line through that diagonal, imagine, and you've all seen, done this before, um, I, can, I can see from corner to opposite corner, yeah, any two points do make a unique line. That's Euclid. Now, if, they're co if they are collinear, they're coplanar. I can also pass a plane through there. It's not one of the six I've drawn, but there's many other planes. So that was your trick question of the set. Now let's look at three planes that intersect at E. Oh boy. So let's see, how, how did we do this before? We said, all right, we've got these three that we normally could see. And, and I'm going to throw in this plane here because I know that the planes that intersect here, the top plane, and that would be, or let's say, let's go in this order, EFQ, the front plane, EFG, the top plane, and the one on the left, which would be hidden from our view over here, EHR. All three of those planes intersect at point E. All right, let's start by naming. 10 different rays, as we're asked here. I've started with the two here, A, B, and A, C. You can see A, B would be this ray. A, C would be this ray. Now, I would not also include A, D. See, A, D is the same ray as A, C. So let's not, let's just not use that. Let's try to find some other rays without me drawing all them in. You can see these two, C, B, and B, C, which form that horizontal line. And We've got DA and EA, starting at D, vertex at D passing through A, vertex at E passing through A as well. Um, as far as opposite rays, well, we clearly have, a, a, let's see, we've got CD right there, which is opposite of CA. So that's one pair of opposite rays. And the other obvious pair, BA is opposite BE. There you go. Let's see how well we draw a picture. We're starting with three non-collinear points, J, K, and L, and I'm sure you all were able to draw them. See, as long as they're not like this, as long as they're non-collinear, it doesn't matter which order they're in, but we'll start, I'll just put them like this, they're random. And we're going to sketch J, K. Take a straight edge and just connect the dots. That's easy enough. And point M is on JK. Point M is on JK. It's important to note, it is not necessarily the midpoint. No one said it was in the middle. So it's somewhere along this segment. And then ML, what's well, a, well, we have an endpoint of M, 
passing through L and that's a ray. So your figure could look like this. And again, depending on how you arranged your letters, it could take many different shapes. But this is what you should have come up with. Well, another sketch here. We've got points P and Q, and we'll draw the ray PQ. Now read this part carefully. Add a point R on the ray so that Q is between P and R. Be careful. The R has got to be out here. Remember, because it says Q is between the P and the R. A little tricky. Let's finish up with a little Algebra 1 review. I want to test if this point A, which is the point 5, 1, remember that's an ordered pair x comma y, see if that is on the line that belongs to this equation, that is y equals x minus 4. Clearly a linear equation. So let's just perform the substitution, replacing of course the x with the 5, the y with the 1, and then we will simplify the equation. Hmm, looks like a true statement. Then we actually have to evaluate, and it is a true statement. Therefore, the point is on the line. Well, that was so much fun. Let's do it again. Again, an ordered pair x comma y, 7, 1, and the linear equation y equals 3x plus 4. Again, with the substitution and the simplification. Oh, something is up in this problem. We notice when we evaluate the number 1 is not equal to the number 25. Therefore, the point is simply not on the line.